I'm really surprised why no one is talking about this, but just this week, Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, had stated on Twitter that GVT4 Omni has gotten a huge upgrade. I think the main reason why people aren't talking about this is because of the whole hype around the new image generation capabilities with the Ghibli style gen and many other image gen related stuff a part of this new release. But essentially, this new upgraded GPT-4 Omni model is better at complex instructions where it can handle multi-step nonce prompts with more precision and consistency. It's smarter with code where it is improved at debugging, architectural planning, you have it so that it can solve tough coding problems like a sharper dev copilot. It's more intuitive and creative where it generates smarter, more original ideas, which is great for brainstorming and reasoning heavy tasks. And lastly, there's a couple of small features, but one of them is where they've introduced fewer emojis in the generation, where they've toned down on the emoji overload, so it's more focused on text rather than fluff. But Sam had also stated that the new version of GPT-4 Omni is particularly good at coding, instruction following, and freedom. Now, the last bit is what is intriguing, which basically means that it is open and less censored. This is actually huge because as we all know, OpenAI had a knack for restricting a lot of things in terms of the images that you can generate, as well as different sorts of generations with text. So this is definitely a huge upgrade and it makes it more appealing to actually use an OpenAI model. But at the moment, this is available for only paid users of OpenAI and all free users will get access to it over the next few weeks. But say if you want to access this new model through their API, you can actually do so by selecting the preview version which is stated as ChatGPT 4.0 latest. And this is how you can use this new upgraded model. There's also a couple of other upgrades to this model which you can take a look at within their changelog. Before we get started, I just want to mention that you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to the world of ai newsletter i'm constantly posting different newsletters on a weekly basis so this is where you can easily get up-to-date knowledge about what is happening in the ai space so definitely go ahead and subscribe as this is completely for free also if you haven't heard already i've launched a second channel so make sure you guys subscribe turn on the notification bell because we're going to be posting a lot more ai updated content over here but guys what got me to make a video on this new upgraded model is because of the benchmark results i saw from lm arena as well as a couple of other benchmark tests but essentially, Ella Marina had posted a screenshot of ChatGPT4 Omni jumping to the number of second leaderboard on their Ella Marina benchmark, which is surpassing GPT 4.5. This is significantly improving on January's version, where it's 30 points above, and it's tied number one on the coding hard prompt benchmark. So overall, it's surpassing many of these other models while being cheaper than GPT 4.5. It is even surpassing Grok 3, but it is slightly behind the Gemini 2.5 Pro model, which just released this week. Now for the next segment of this video, what we're gonna do is showcase a side-by-side -side comparison of the GPT 4 Omni versus the new Gemini 2.5 Pro, as both of these models are at the top of the leaderboard in Ella Marina. And we're gonna be asking it head to head on these prompts and we're going to assess how well these models are in terms of generating these different things. We're first asking it to build a responsive web app using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that lets users track monthly income and expenses with features like adding, editing, deleting transactions. And the reason why with this first prompt we're sending it in is because both of these models know how to work with detailed instructions, especially with prompts containing multiple requests. So let's see what's gonna happen with the two generations. So we're first gonna take a look at what ChatGPT generates and then we'll take a look at what the Gemini model generates. So here's the first iteration for this prompt. We have a pretty nice sleek design that the ChatGPT 4.0 upgraded model was able to output. We can see that it is actually able to have a dark mode that is functional. You can add in a description, let's say food, uh, the amount, let's say 10,000. I know that's not realistic, but let's just add it to showcase it. And there we go. We actually have a functional visualization of our expense over here. So this is actually a functional monthly budget tracker app that was generated by this model. 
Now, if we take a look at what the Gemini model was able to generate, I have went along and copied the code locally and opened it up as an HTML file, and this is the app that it generated. Now, one thing I realized right away is that it doesn't actually have a functional dark mode or the ability to actually visualize your income and expenses. I just randomly put in a couple of things, and you can see that if I have to click on add expense, it doesn't actually work, and it doesn't actually showcase this. But overall, it did get the job done in creating a responsive front end. So I guess that's kind of good. But in terms of actually having functionality, the GBT model was able to create something like this. And that is something that has a hedge over the other model, the Gemini 2.5 Pro. So within this benchmark test, I guess both of them are past, but I would uh, lean towards the GPT-4 Omni generating a better answer. Next up, we have another difficult prompt where we're asking the two models to code a TV that lets you change channels with number keys, zero to nine, come up with an idea for a channel for all the numbers. And essentially we wanted to have it so that it is gonna be able to take this prompt and generate different code snippets or animations for each of these channels. So let's see what both of these models end up generating. Let's send in this prompt to the Gemini 2.5 Pro and see what it's capable of generating. And there we go. This is the generation that I got from ChatGPT and this is where you have multiple channels up to nine. And if I actually click on this, there is multiple channels that have been generated. Now, I know it didn't get the mainframe of the TV generated, but if you take a look at what the Gemini model was capable of generating, you can see how much better it actually looks. It actually has a longer context, so it can generate a lot more, and it was able to structure this TV a little bit better. You have a static frame as well. Now, if I am to change through all the channels, you have generations, which actually looks really better than what GBT was capable of doing. This is why I made multiple videos on the Gemini 2.5 coder. It is is super nice and you can see how many different channels and how many different animations it was capable of generating so i would definitely give ChatGPT a pass but in this case it didn't generate the tv so it's a fail and the gemini 2.5 a pass now in the same manner i can give this a fail as well since it didn't actually generate a functional web app which was kind of surprising but overall you can see we're currently tied Next up, we're going to create an SVG representation of a butterfly with symmetrical wings and simple styling. Now, as we all know, this is possibly one of the hardest prompts for any large language model to complete. Now, both of these models have actually done a great job in generating this SVG representation of a butterfly. But let's compare these two models in an SVG viewer. And there we go. We got the generation from both of the models. This is what has been generated from the GPT 4.0 Omni. And this is the generation I got from Gemini 2.5 Pro. In my opinion, I prefer this one over the GPT model. But at the end of the day, both of them did a great job in generating SVG with symmetrical wings and clean styling. So both of them do get a pass from my end. But you can see that this Gemini model is actually pretty impressive in terms of its generation. But if you take a look at this model compared to what you saw in the previous months, it was actually capable of generating SVG code of a butterfly. So this is definitely a huge upgrade and it just goes to show that this is a model that has been uh, configured to be better in code generation now. Next up, we're gonna have it create a Tetris game. Now I'm back in Google AI Studio because I ran out of requests within the Gemini app, but let's see what these two models are capable of generating in terms of generating the Tetris game in a single HTML file. And there we go. We have gotten the generation from ChatGPT in terms of generating this game. And then this is the generation I have gotten from the Gemini 2.5 Pro. So both of these models did a great job in generating the game. And I personally think that the GPT one looks a little bit more appealing, but both of them obviously get the job done. So I can give both of these two models a pass. But overall, you can see that this model is great that it is even competing against the Gemini 2.5 Pro. This is an older model that is smaller, but it has gotten a huge new upgrade. And I definitely think that 
this is prob probably a preview of the GPT-5 model that could be coming out later this year. This is something that's cheaper than the 4.5 and it's something that has great coding capabilities that can take in multiple requests for you. So huge props to the OpenAI team for coming back and releasing this amazing model. I'll leave all the links in the description below. Hope you found this video to be helpful. In my opinion, both these models are great, but I'll still be sticking with the Gemini 2.5 as well as the DeepSeek models because it's more cost efficient and it's easier to work with because they're open source, uh, excluding the Gemini model. But that's basically it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed everything, guys. I'll leave all these links in the description below. Make sure you follow the new channel. Make sure you guys subscribe to the newsletter. Make sure you uh, join our private Discord. Follow me on Twitter. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and please take a look at our previous videos so that you can stay up to date with whatever is happening in the world of AI. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.